So welcome to our Lunch and Learn webinar. Today we're covering the perfect pair of digital solutions. I'm going to hide my video and you're welcome to do the same. But again, you can unmute yourself at any time if you have questions. With Valentine's Day just around the corner, I thought we could have some little fun with this. So if you're not a fan, bear with me. I promise I'll get through this quickly. But let's get started. This might be a little bit nostalgic for some of you. That's right, folks. Today we're going to play the digital dating game. You're about to meet the star of our show, looking for the perfect match. New Readers Press Online Learning. Online learning is known for its digital courses, focused on meeting the needs of learners, striving to achieve high school equivalency. The program is flexible to be used with a variety of programs and instructional models, accessible 24 seven on multiple devices, and of course, customizable for the individual learner. For those of you new to the digital dating scene, NRP Online Learning offers courses in all four high school equivalency areas to include language arts, math, science and social studies. It's also available in multiple levels, including pre-HSE, GED, high set, and of course, coming soon, TABE levels, E, M, D, and A. Let's meet our digital contestants and find the perfect match for the online experience. Contestant number one comes to us by Voxy from NGEN and offers adaptive ESL instruction, personalized learning experiences, and career courses designed to nurture your educational and vocational needs. Meet and Jen. Contestant number two is New Reader Press's answer to building English language skills through current events and high interest news stories. Its built in weekly lesson plans make it affordable, interactive, and easy to use. Meet news for you online. Last but not least, contestant number three joins us from sunny California, offering learners the ability to master skills in English, math, work life skills, and test prep. It has multiple levels from beginner through high school equivalency, and New Readers Press has built crosswalks directly to online learning. Learning upgrade. I think we have a winner, folks. Contestant number three is the perfect match for NRP Online Learning. While news for you online was a close second, and Voxy and Jen, you're just in a league of your own for adult learners. Why did online learning choose? Why did online learning choose learning upgrade? Students love using them together for the interactive content. They can work at their own pace. They have a feeling of achievement and they get immediate feedback for both right and wrong answers. Why do teachers love using them together? They have built-in assessments, customized curriculum, useful data analytics, and of course, they're intended for HSE test preparation. There are many ways to marry them together. I promise this is the last of the cheesiness, folks. 
All right, so let's do some examples here of how we can combine these two digital solutions in a basic pre-HSE combination lesson. If I were combining both of these, I would begin class with maybe a video, for example, introduction to verb tense. And the next thing I would do would actually be to review the New Readers Press online learning lesson as a class. I'm going to jump into New Readers Press online learning and show you around here a little bit. So if I were to go into this particular pre-HSE reading and writing lesson, I'm jumping into what is referred to as a study dashboard. So I would begin my class by going straight to that lesson. And here's one of the fun ways that I like to do that. I've built the curriculum into the platform so that we can easily go to that. If I go to course on the left-hand menu and I click on curriculum, everything I have is built directly in here. So I have instantly pre-HSA reading and writing unit four lesson eight, which is my verb lesson. I can jump in and quickly use the lesson Go over this. Now this can be used if you're remote, if you're online, if you're in a hybrid situation, or even if you're presenting in class. You can actually put this up on an overhead projector and be able to share the lesson with the students as a group. Notice there's some key terms and vocabulary at the bottom. And one of the things you'll notice that I did here was I actually highlighted a sentence here. And the reason I did that is because I plan to come back and review later in the lesson. So notice I said highlight important points for students. Then I would review the guided practice problems in New Readers Press as a class. So I'm not only going to actually go over the lesson, possibly use a video, maybe even include an interactive at this point. I'm also going to jump right in and go into the guided practice. <clears throat> if I go to my curriculum, I can go straight down to that and go into the guided practice. There's flashcards as well if I wanted to review the vocabulary with the students. <clears throat> or I could go straight into the guided practice. In the guided practice, you can actually choose. This has a read aloud feature if you're not familiar with online learning. Guided practice, irregular verbs. Choose the correct form of the verb in parentheses. I just shared my sound to make sure everyone can hear that, okay? As I scroll down, I can also make sure that with each one of these, when I'm done, we show the answer. So if we were working as a group, I might say, okay, everyone, and number one, put into the chat what you think the correct answer is. And I would show this and say, what do you think is the correct answer? I might even click on the tip to say, oh, you're not quite sure. Well, what is the subject? And then we could go into showing the answer for that particular question. Then I would move on to number two, have my students type into the chat. So if I were teaching in an online learning situation, that's how I would share this information. And then of course, if I'm in a classroom situation, I can say, raise your hand if you think it's this one and raise your hand if you think it's this one and we could move into showing the tips and the answers. Rach, so yeah. it's Greg. That's Greg. Eva is wondering why some of the lessons were asterisks. And uh, of course, by the time I read the question, you had moved on, so I didn't see it. Uh, can you address that? I certainly can. I knew I was <laughs> going to be using these for a presentation, Eva. So that is why I put an asterisk there. That is how I wrote the curriculum for my own purposes, because I knew this particular curriculum was going to be used here. So glad you asked that. Thank you. You bet. So the last step in, in this particular pre-HSE lesson would be for me to actually assign learning upgrade lessons as homework. So you'll notice that what I'm doing is including the NRP lesson. I can use the lesson in class. I can use the guided practice in class. 
And then I can even have them do the practice questions in class. So I could walk around the room or I could do quick breakout rooms to check in with each student and say, how are you feeling about this? And then the last step, one of the ways you can do this would be to assign learning upgrade lessons that complement. And I would do that based on our uh, New Readers Press online learning crosswalk. So I'm gonna click on that and we can take a look at it together. If you've not seen this crosswalk before, this is how you actually are able to make these two things work together as a perfect pair. So you'll notice in the top left column, it says learning upgrade comprehension. And then here it says NRP online learning. This is specifically the pre-HSE course. Now there are 63 pages in this. So as I zoom down to a couple of other pages, I can show you how it jumps into the English 5, Learning Upgrade English Level 5, very common, aligns very closely with any student that's an NRS Level 4 or 5. And as you keep going, you will see that it goes into math crosswalks for pre-HSE and test prep courses for GED. So each one of these has some type of alignment based on the NRP course in addition to the learning upgrade course. So to match these up, we've done this crosswalk. I wanna demonstrate for you how I would do this one in particular. So in this case, I would go to that top column, find the learning upgrade English level five lesson, but first I'm going to look for that pre-HSE course and find the unit and lesson that we were just looking at. So I can do this either way where I can start with learning upgrade or I can start with new readers press and then I can complement each other based on which units and lessons connect to one another. And that's why we built this crosswalk. So another thing that we can do is we can link all of these to Google Classroom, Canvas, Blackboard, or some other course management system. If you're using something like that, the curriculums are able to be linked directly. So I'll demonstrate how to do that for you as well. And then you can also build your lesson plans directly into NRP Online Learning, where your study dashboard actually becomes your teacher edition of the courses. So let me sort of demonstrate how to do that. Do we have any other questions? Yes, actually, uh, there are a few that are kind of joined. Um, uh, so one is um, for registering the students. Do you register the students for both NRP online and learning upgrade together? And the second uh, building on that possibly is, are the two platforms sold as a bundle with a price break? Oh, great questions. So the first thing I would say is these are two separate digital products. If you're interested in purchasing, we can certainly connect you with your local sales rep. Um, let me find a link here. I can put that right into the chat for you. So you have that. And then I'm gonna show you as well, let me pop that into the chat. So there is a connection for you to find your local sales rep that can help you with pricing for each of these digital products. We have pilots available as well as trials for these products. And I can tell you that um, when I started students out, I found that it was best to start with one product at a time. So because there's the initial digital literacy that our students have, it's important to make sure that as they get started, they feel comfortable with one product before immediately starting them in, a, in another. And it also depends on the group of students you're working with. So some of the lessons I'm sharing today are intended for pre-HSE students, GED students, or ESL students or ELA students. So as you're looking at how these products might work, you wanna think about what your program looks like. These work with programs for distance learning, programs for independent study, um, programs that are, are actually providing courses or classes as well as just tutoring programs. So we have a lot of uh, library programs that actually participate with these two products. And that's sort of the purpose of this is to show you how you can use these two products in so many different ways. Did I answer both of those questions? You did and more are coming in. All right. If you, if you could restate for us the, uh, the tests for which uh, online learning and learning upgrade prepare learners, that would be great. Okay, which tests? So I can talk about the courses that are available. So right now we have 
free HSE courses, HiSET courses, GED courses, and you'll notice those are all in all four subject areas. So you've got your language arts, math, science, and social studies. And then coming soon are, sneak peek here, TAPE courses in all four levels. So you can see you've got your E, M, D, and A courses. And lastly, are there, uh, are there crosswalks for all four content areas or just math and ELA? All four content areas are included. So great question. If I go back in here, you'll notice each column under the GED test prep course level here has language arts and then there's science units and lessons and social studies units and lessons. So typically the math is sort of separated out because there's so much content in the math course, but this shows you how your learning upgrade comprehension course is going to match up to all three of those. So you can really integrate your learning if you'd like to. For example, right here, lesson 50, compare and contrast, you actually have a language arts lesson as well as science lessons that can work with that and social studies lessons. So if you have um, a class similar to what I've done in the past where I had a group of pre HSE students all at varying levels, and I was expected to teach all four subject areas. If that's the case, this is a great way to integrate whatever time you have face-to-face -face or online with those students and share all of these lessons together with those students. Any other questions before I show how to connect this? One more. Mouths are watering, Rach. Uh, <laughs> it. And folks want to know, when are we going to release the uh, online learning for the TABE? Oh, that is a great question. We're in the stages of piloting that program uh, with a couple of different institutions. You can reach out to your sales rep if you're interested in doing something like that. Um, but we will hopefully be releasing in March or April of this year. So it's just around the corner as we put the fine touches on that program. I see one more question in here about the science and social studies uh, lang learning upgrade lessons are really ELA proficiencies, not science. In that particular page, again, there are 63 pages in this crosswalk. So if you dig in there, I'm gonna show you some of the learning upgrade lessons as well. So let's just look at um, the example we had here. Um, let me pop back in here for just a moment. I'm gonna go back to look at the learning upgrade lesson for verbs. Just wanna make sure I've got the right lesson in here. So I'm gonna log in as a teacher here and show you how easy it is to get in. Let's see, how many logins do I have? You can actually use our teacher whiteboard in here in multiple different ways. So what I love about Learning Upgrade is how easy they've made it. I'm in my administrator role where there's tons of wonderful data. I'm gonna switch over to my teacher role where I can find an actual teacher whiteboard. And what that is, is exactly what the student sees, but in um, I have full access to every lesson. Right now, my whiteboard is inactive. Get that started for us again here. And these are the courses available in Learning Upgrade, especially if you're new to this. Um, this is a lot of courses. They started out with just reading. Select your course to get started. They have expanded into four different areas, English, math, skills, and test prep. Notice a couple of these gray ones here. These are also coming soon for Learning Upgrade. So you've got work-life skills, and these are the lessons that are available in work life skills. So you can see lots of different things in here. Critical thinking, there's one that we see across the board. And then um, financial literacy is coming soon, as well as citizenship, which is wonderful for our ELA learners. So just as an example of, and how soon is the question? I love that. I wish I could give you a real answer to that. I, the best answer I can give you right now is 2022. Right now, Learning Upgrade is very focused on their learning management system, the teacher side of things, 
the administrator side of things. And later this year, they plan to switch gears and move into making sure these courses are available. Um, if you purchase learning upgrade seats, as these courses become available, you'll automatically see those lessons appear for the students and appear on your um, learning management side so you can assign those courses. And my understanding right now is that they plan to release those lesson by lesson or maybe in groups of lessons. So maybe lesson one through five will be available and then eventually the entire course will be available. I understand, Eva. I can expand on that just a bit, uh, Rachel. Um, the, the, the plan right now is that the work and life skills should roll out by July, so summer uh, of 2022. Uh, financial literacy and citizenship, they're saying very conservatively because they don't want to they don't want to uh, have people champing at the bit and make promises that they can't keep. But they're looking at probably November of this year for the financial literacy and citizenship. But all are expected to release. Uh, again, beginning in uh, summer this year, and then and then the other two coming in in November. And yes, we can give uh, price quotes for purchases. Now, typically, those price quotes are good for two months, uh, but you can you, uh, you can purchase the learning upgrade licenses um, with a with a future start date, but you can purchase them right now or within the next two months or whenever you want. And do we have any discounts right now, Greg? Uh, currently, there are a few specials, but they're very specific. So not just for learning upgrade or online learning, but specific components, for example, uh, combining the teacher guides and workbooks uh, for the, um, uh, for the digital literacy course in Learning Upgrade. And Eva, are there Valentine's specials? Uh, <laughs> there is one, as a matter of fact, for anyone who signs up uh, by uh, February 14th, um, you win <laughs> my Valentine. <laughs> I've worked with Eva, Eva, so I am laughing because I know that sense of humor. <laughs> Let me quickly show just the lesson that was connected to this unit four lesson eight in New Readers Press online and then the verb, verb perfect tenses and verb, verb tense time in English upgrade five, lessons 22 and 23. So I would like to just jump in there to show everyone what those look like. So let's go into English upgrade five. You have a gold certificate so you can play any level you like. And you'll see right here is lesson 22 and 23, both on verbs. Look at this sentence. Mary has walked to school for two years. This sentence uses the present perfect tense to describe an action that started in the past two years ago and continues to the present time. It starts with the word has or have and uses walked, the past participle form of the verb walk. For regular verbs, this is just the past tense verb. Let's change this to end in the past. Mary had walked to school until one year ago. The sentence uses the past perfect tense to describe an action that ended in the past one year ago. It starts with the word had and also uses the past participle walked. Let's change this to occur in the future. Before school ends, she will have walked to school for two years. The future perfect tense describes an action that will occur in the future before some other action. It starts with the words will have and also uses the past participle. So you can see how this will reinforce what you just taught using New Readers Press online learning. Before I forget, I wanna jump in and just show you the two things that I mentioned earlier. 
One, which is how you can actually build your lesson plans directly into New Readers Press Online Learning. So again, this is my study dashboard that I have available to me, which is really the same course as my students would have access to. But I can use the tools built in here that are really intended for students to be able to um, learn some college and career readiness skills, making notes, putting in bookmarks, highlighting things. I would use my teacher edition and I would actually put into the notes my full lesson. So here's my lesson for verbs, basic lesson plans. I would say I'm going to begin class with this uh, less this video, then I'm going to do this as a class, then move to the guided practice. And then I would actually review highlights with the students and then assign the learning upgrade. So I'm actually building my whole lesson plan in here. And then of course, um, I can click on the highlights here at the end and go to that unit four and look at the highlight that I have for verb tense and review that and say, remember the three main tenses are present, past and future tense. So if I'm in New Readers Press, I can actually use these notes, bookmarks and highlights to create all of my lesson plans. And you'll notice if I go into my notes that I have more than one lesson plan built in here, just as a very basic outline to allow me to connect directly from here to my lessons makes for a nice smooth transition when you're teaching in person. And then the other thing that you can do, as I showed you earlier, I have curriculum built directly in here. Again, this is my teacher edition. So I'm seeing lessons that maybe I gave to just one student, lesson I gave to all of the students or an entire class. And in this case, one of the things I can do is I can use the URLs up here. I can highlight this URL and actually put it directly into Google Classroom, Blackboard, Canvas, whatever you might be using. Or I can even just email this URL to the students and say, hey, work on the curriculum I've assigned you. So I can do that for the individual, or I can also click on the lesson itself. And you'll notice that URL now has a number after it. So it has a unique URL just for this particular curriculum. And I can copy that and paste it into whatever um, course management system I'm using. So as an example, I went ahead and put my lesson plans in here. And here are my instructions. This is what I told my students. Now, what I love about this is, as we know, things often happen where you plan on teaching in person and lo and behold, that's not going to happen whether you have a bad snowstorm that shuts you down or COVID issues, anything can happen. So doing something like this allows me to prepare for that face-to-face -face class or that Zoom class, but then also to be able to say, hey folks, guess what? Go ahead and go in here and do this independently. So I put the video in, I put the link directly to that unit and lesson, that curriculum. So that's a unique link that allows the student to go straight to that curriculum just like this. And then I can also just put the login page for learning upgrade in there so that the students go straight to the student login page and then they can go to the unit and lesson that I've shared with them to complete in my lesson plans. So it's a very quick way to say, hey, here's your homework, by the way, go into learning upgrade and do lessons 22 and 23. Any additional questions before I move on? I love this. Rach, do you still have the teacher whiteboard open uh, uh, in uh, yeah. lesson upgrade? We had a request, just have a quick look, see maybe at one of the lower level lessons. Absolutely, absolutely. So yeah. pop back here. So a lower level lesson, if you're looking for English or math, anything in particular? No, no, no wasn't specified. Okay. Can we disable the audio or video? Greg, I'm going to let you answer that in the chat while I share this. So I'm going to click on number one. Let's just do English one. And I'll show you a simple example. One of the things I find most people want to see when they get in here is what lessons are. They need. So you can see the variety of um, constant blends, vowel blends, um, the phonetics that's involved in this, the sight words that are included. So there's a lot of built in information here. And let me just go to something as simple as long vowels, something mo a lot of students struggle. Ladies with. and gentlemen, it's time for that quiet and cool crooner, the mysterious Silent E and all his star vowel singers.
The word cake has two vowels, A and E. Do, 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 we do, use a long sound of A. And E is silent E. Silent E makes A sound like its name. A and make, sale, wait, date, and name. Use a long sound of A. The word tight has two vowels, I and E. Do, 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 do. Use a long sound of I. So that gives you an idea of how the songs and videos are, are built into this. One of the things I personally like is that I have the skip button at the top. I know Learning Upgrade plans to make these available to students as well. Um, and they're also planning on including, including a rewind button because sometimes students need to hear it over and over again to really hear the sound that they need to make, especially if they're ELA students. So let me skip forward just a little bit. But you got a taste. You got two words to choose from, one with a silent E at the end and one without. Listen carefully to this word and press on the word that matches. Fate. So see this little button up here in the top right corner? That's what I just did. Someone asked if I can turn this on or off. Right there is an off button for me as the teacher whiteboard. So now I can use this for guided practice if I'm working with a student um, and I can simply talk through this myself and answer the question. That's it. How about this word, hide? So that's specifically just for the music in the background but this way we're working together. And I think there are plans to, to work on the voiceovers as well so that you have more options and more flexibility. And I saw another question in here about individualizing the lesson. So I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit. I have a couple of other lesson plans I built in here just as examples, um, but let me just talk a little bit about how you could use a vocabulary lesson. One of the things that is really difficult for ELA learners is vocabulary, vocabulary, vocabulary. So I just put in another lesson in here on how to connect something with nonfiction and understanding vocabulary. And there's tons of things in here about working with context clues because all learners come across words they don't know and want to work with context clues to find those. So this is an example of how I would take a lesson and have my students become detectives. I might actually take the lesson in online learning and then break it into paragraphs or break it into sentences and then give each student a sentence. And I've done this both face-to-face -face and online where I've actually just copied and pasted and only put it in the chat to each student and said, okay, each of you is going to read aloud your sentence. And then we would try to put the sentences back into the correct order. And it's really fun if you put on a timer and kind of you know, force them to hurry up, see if you can put the sentences back in order and put them in the correct order. And then of course, read the paragraph loud to see how close they got. You can do this in breakout groups in Zoom. Um, you can do this in small groups if you're face-to-face -face in a classroom. A lot of fun to work with ELA learners to really get them following just their fluency, reading aloud, uh, and then the comprehension of the material when they try to put it back together. So it really hits on a number of different things. And then the next piece of that is, is um, actually discussing how important it is to put things in order. So you're addressing two different skills here, putting things in order, and then also figuring out the meaning of unknown words. And so um, I would then complete the guided practice again in online learning as a group. And then I would move forward to actually using the Learning Upgrade Teacher Whiteboard. If I were to take you into the test prep course, and I'd like to jump into that for everyone now because I wanna show you how valuable this can be. There's actually uh, under the prep section, the TOEFL. And under here, you've got multiple vocabulary lessons. And each of these, so here's vocabulary 3A, number 11, number 18, and throughout this, there are great vocabulary lessons. And each one of these really builds on that concept of figuring out unknown words by using context clues. So I'm just gonna give you a quick- There are lots of ways to find out what a word means. Look at this sentence. The big dog has a huge neck. If you want to know what huge means, look at the other words. This is a big dog which would have a large neck. So you can figure out that huge means very large. 
Look at this word, unhappy. We know what happy means. U-N, un, is a prefix which comes before the word, and happy is the root. Un means not. So if a person is unhappy, they are not happy. How about this? I think that gives you an idea of how this builds together and can work towards that vocabulary learning all throughout that entire course. Um, and that's one that I think I would probably use in class, especially with ELA learners. I saw a comment in there, is this for kids? Um, and, and that's a great question. And I can tell you, I initially was very, very hesitant with my adult learners to use learning upgrade. And my hesitancy was not their hesitancy. And I had tried multiple different programs like Starfall that were intended for children. And I think that it was, it was something that I discovered was uh, they loved it. it I, the response I had to it was not the response they had to it. And the way that this was developed was to really increase their skills through mastery. So each lesson requires 75% mastery for them to move on to the next lesson or even on to the next course. And I, while my own personal hesitancy as a teacher thought, no way they're going to do this, the students loved it. So I had to get over my own fear of it and, and give it a try. And I was amazed at the success this had, not only with ELA students, but actually my low level literacy learners who would literally come into my classroom singing some of the songs and I would chuckle under my breath thinking they like this why do they like this but they do so if you're if you're curious try a pilot take a look at it let your students give you the feedback because I was quite surprised myself as an instructor how it how easily it was used with adult um, ABE learners you'll notice we've also built in GED reading high set math and GED math so you do have some higher level courses. And um, if we were to click on some of those to just take a look at the same type of lessons for uh, verb tenses. Look at these three sentences. John plays football. John played football yesterday. So some of these higher level lessons don't necessarily include um, the songs. They simply have clear vocabulary, clear speaking, um, at a slower pace that allows students to really get comfortable with that, especially if you have advanced ELA learners who are needing to make that transition into high school equivalency. Any other questions? I'm trying to, to keep my eye on that as well. And I did want to move on because I noticed one of the things that I didn't mention was um, I shared our contestant number two with you news for you online. And that's also an excellent resource, especially if you're looking for good vocabulary practice. So I wanna jump into that really quickly, just to share with you. This is one of those resources that if you were to go into this, um, and again, this is very affordable. Um, this is up-to-date news sources, up-to-date articles that are talking about things that are happening. So this is actually the February 2nd issue. And I'm sure some of you have seen this on the news. I used to live in Los Angeles in this area and I was absolutely shocked at some of the images. But you'll notice there's exercises in here, a full teacher's guide built in that includes um, uh, reproducibles that you can print out and then you can download full audio for this but there's also crossword puzzles built in and word search puzzles built in. And all the way at the bottom, look at all of that vocabulary. As the students are reading the article, you can actually highlight and they're learning the uh, definitions of the words as they're reading. And then a way to incorporate some writing into using News For You Online along with Learning Upgrade or New Readers Press Online Learning is to have them do some writing and, and you know, part of their homework to be leave a comment. Write your own comment in there. What do you think about this article? So this is a great resource. If you haven't checked this out, um, definitely take a look at News For You Online as well. It's an excellent complement to ELA classes and ABE classes. I love that it's written uh, in a way where it, it feels like it's so meaningful to them right now.
And I had a question earlier, so I'm gonna jump ahead. This is a lesson I put together for GED students in math, because I thought it was really nice to show you as well that math can be used with Pythagorean theorem is something that isn't on those formula sheets. So students really need to know this. And I personally, as a math teacher, loved learning upgrade because of its interactive features. So if I were to go into a learning upgrade uh, lesson for you here, let me pop back over. I loved that if I went into the Pythagorean theorem and wanted to, to have the students utilize something that was specifically, this is in our pre-HSE, we've got this in a couple of different locations. <clears throat> Lesson 50 in GED math, okay. So GED math, lesson 50. For a right triangle. I'm just gonna go to the- uh, Look at the figure, read the problem, and select the answer. So this is where I found this extremely useful for students as a reinforcement of this is interactive. Adult learners need visual and they need interactive. So if you can get over the voiceovers and let your students use this, you're going to love the fact that they will be choosing. No. Nope. Remember your triples. Six, eight, ten. So the hypotenuse is ten. So they get that feedback if they get. The Figure out feedback. this problem. That's it. Hmm, try out this they one. Get reinforcement if they have a correct answer. So this is one that I happen to really, really enjoy the math lessons. Now I had someone mention earlier about using this individually. So I'm gonna jump ahead and just go into how I might use this particularly alone. So there's a lot of different situations where you might just be tutoring with a student maybe once a week and they are working independently. So Learning Upgrade, the key to, to both of these programs is really the onboarding and Learning Upgrade has really easy onboarding. They've actually developed um, the onboarding materials in multiple languages. And if you need a language that's not available, you can reach out to us and we can make sure that that is something you can put together. But it also has automatic placement. So each of these programs has a placement exam or a pretest exam that you can put in for the students. So if you set a student up with Learning Upgrade and you give them the math placement or the English placement, as soon as they complete that, complete that it automatically opens up the first lesson for them. And Learning Upgrade specifically was built with that mastery built in. So the student can really binge learn with Learning Upgrade. And you can feel comfortable knowing that you will have the ability to monitor their growth in the new learning management system because there are these fabulous built-in reports that can really track how the student's improving and how they're growing in the program. If you haven't seen the learning management system, let me give you a sneak peek of that because as I go into these reports, there are so many beautiful things to see. If I'm looking at individual students, I can go into a student monitor report or I love the student progress report. And as I look at this, I can actually see which course was the student working in, what date did they play last, what is their current level. This student has achieved a bronze level in the reading course. And so I can get all the details I need for each student and be able to really follow along even if they're working totally independently. The same thing is true for New Readers Press Online Learning. I actually met with a former colleague of mine to go over this, and we talked about how to use this as an independent study tool. The key is setting students up. So we have checklists that we've built that you can use to help your student to know, okay, what do I do first? Then what do I do? What's the next step? And this is very, very skills focused. So while you might be concerned, are they getting the right content? The fact is the content is there. And if you've, if you've ever looked very closely at a GED or high set exam, you'll know that it's more important that you're teaching the students the skills of critical thinking, inferencing, um, reading charts, graphs, tables. Those types of things are actually way more important than, at, than preparing them with some specific type of social studies knowledge or specific science knowledge. 
And it took me a couple of years transitioning from K-12 to adult ed to realize that. If you focus on the skills, the content is a part of it, but the skills are, are the focus. And then again, you can monitor progress using the reporting dashboard to look at their data. And one of the things I love about New Readers Press Online Learning is there's actually a direct connection to GED that I wanted to show. We've had lots of questions and I know I've reached the end of my time. If anyone wants to stick around with me, I'm gonna to go to ged.com and show you how when you take the GED Ready test, you have direct access to NRP Online Learning GED courses. And it'll tell you exactly what you need to study. So these are my scores right here. Here's where I took the GED Ready. I took the math test and the language arts test just for fun. It was really hard to get lower scores than I wanted. So I'm gonna go into the language arts and click on the score report and show you how built right in here, you link your study material. And so I can go into this. There's both online programs as well as some of our print materials. Our score boosts are connected in here. And if I were to switch over to some of the print materials, it would tell me exactly what I needed to study. So here's New Readers Press Online Learning, GED Test Prep. I click on that and hit continue and look what it gives me. All of the units and lessons. So students can, can share this information with you. If you're in a local program, at the very bottom, it says share with your adult ed center, or they can print it and then email it to you. Um, and it actually has an opportunity for them to connect as well. But this is one of the ways that you can create your curriculum. So I would actually take this information for a student and then I would go into New Readers Press Online Learning and I would actually go ahead and create another curriculum just like this. And I might even call it GED Ready. I might actually just call it GED Ready Test Prep. In fact, I think I built one in here for, for you as an example. Typically, I like to break it into small manageable chunks so that students can see, okay, I've completed unit one, yay, everything I needed to learn in unit one is done. And then they feel like they've ha they're having success along the way. But I have had programs that have actually went ahead and built every single one of those units and lessons into one curriculum. So if I click on that curriculum for you, you'll see here's a GED Ready test from Maya Buddy. And so everything that she needed in unit one is built in here for unit one, lesson six. And that's who's in this program right here. So unit one, lesson six is put in. I could go through and do unit two and include lessons one and five, then jump to unit five and include lessons one um, with all of these different subjects as well as lesson five. So I could really, um, allow this individual to move more quickly through the curriculum rather than completing the entire structured plan. So they're going to get to GED testing faster that way. I know I'm about five minutes over my time. I'm a talker. We had lots of questions. So if anyone has anything, any other questions, feel free to shout out. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining me to meet the perfect pair of digital solutions. Rachel, thank you so much. Great job as always. Uh, everyone who's still on the call, uh, again, we will be uh, sending the, uh, the URL, the link to the recording, uh, probably not until Monday, Tuesday, but that will be forthcoming, that is forthcoming. Um, additional questions, you're more than welcome to uh, reach out to us at newreaderspress.com. You see Rachel's uh, uh, email address, here on the screen as well. And again, thanks so much for sticking with us. We appreciate you as customers. We appreciate you as educators for all that you do uh, in your community and for our end users. I know uh, I'm just thinking aloud their thoughts. We appreciate you. Absolutely. Uh, we are, you are so important in the world of adult education. You're making changes and, and uh, affecting people's lives more than you probably know. So thank you for everything you do. Have a great day, everyone. Bye now. Bye-bye. <laughs>